Well, good morning again, and welcome to Central Church. We are a Jesus church. That means everyone is welcome, and no one is perfect, but that everyone is loved, uh, and that everyone is welcome. So glad to have you with us again. Um, the best place to check us out is online at centralchurchcambridge.ca. All the information is there. Big day today in the church. We are ordaining new elders for those who are going to be in uh, in person. The online service, unfortunately, uh, won't have that. For all the other information, go please check out uh, the bulletin uh, that is online uh, for all the Bible studies, all the things that are happening. We have a management meeting, a session meeting coming up this week. Uh, so please go check us out there. Would you please bow your heads in prayer with me? Gracious Lord, we thank you that we may come to you and be in your presence again in this day. Thank you that we may know that you are the one who will speak into our lives and into our hearts and that this message is a message that you have given so that we may come and stand before you and know how much you care for us and how much you love us. We pray for our folks who are going through hard and difficult times. Uh, We pray, Lord, as we come out of COVID slowly but surely, for all of us to to feel safe, to be safe, uh, and again, to start doing things as we would normally do them. Thank you that we can see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We continue to pray for the brokenness in this world and for the brokenness of the war and all the hurt and pain and suffering that that is uh, causing. Will you please, Lord, in your way, in your plan, take care of all of those folks. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we are continuing our series on going out on a limp. Uh, and remember I said last week I, I didn't get that wrong. Um, I want to start with a, with a true story from my own life. 1976, first year university and uh, stayed in a, in a men's residence uh, in in the university in South Africa. Um, didn't have a lot of money, and in those days, many of you won't even know what this is, we did not have cell phones. Um, we only had phones with a little tail on them that you used, uh, regular dial phones. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to to make a call when you lived in residence, you had to use the the, the call phones where you put money uh, in and then you call your parents. Now, my parents lived far from where, where the university was. Um, so it was always long distance and it was really, really expensive. And, and it really ate into my budget to call mom and dad, but I wanted to call them because I had a good relationship with them. However, uh, s- somehow I discovered that that my room key uh, could open so many doors and one day just tried the door of the private office of the manager of the residence. And would you believe it? Opened the door. And there on the desk of his private office was a telephone. And this telephone I could use to make long distance calls and it didn't cost me a penny. So I would always wait until there was no one and I'd go in and I'd make my calls and Talk to mom and dad, and all was fine and dandy. Of course, until the university started seeing this bill going up, and they they uh, asked the, the manager what's going on, and they saw that many of these uh, phone calls were made uh, long distance to a place called Ladysmith and Natel, and there was only one guy who came from Ladysmith and Natel that was in that residence, and uh, yep, and that was me. And so I was caught. So, so did I have his permission to go into his office? And did I think that I was doing anything wrong by using the phone? I mean, was there? Here's the problem. I wasn't thinking, right? And I got caught. So it ended up with me having to pay for all those calls. And I got three months extra uh, what we would call front desk duty, where every evening from 6 to 10, you would sit at the front desk, answering the telephone, calling people, taking messages. Uh, so four hours of the time, which I could spend with my girlfriend, or worst case scenario, I, I could even go and study. I couldn't do. 
Because you see, I chose to take a shortcut. I chose instead of the honest, uphill, difficult road, I chose to take the easy, wide, shortcut road. And no, 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 no. Don't look at me like that. Don't point your fingers at me like that because you've all done it. Romans 3.23 says, We have all taken shortcuts, and all of us have fallen short of the glorious lives that God wills for us. And yes, I know the word shortcut is not written in the Bible, but isn't that exactly what sin is? Taking a shortcut, not trusting God, not waiting for God, thinking that I can get there faster than God, taking a shortcut. Adam and Eve did. Abraham and Sarah did. And you and I did. And today we're going to see that Jacob and Rebecca did. So go with me to Genesis chapter 27. I'm going to read the first 14 verses with you. The rest of the chapter, please go and read it at home. I can't read all of us. It'll take us the whole day. But please, to get the whole story, go read it at home. Genesis 27 verse 1. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Ezo, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Can I just stop there for a second? Here's that word blessing again. You will remember that we, that, that we spoke about that last week. The birthright and the blessing, they kind of went hand in hand. The one who had both of these would inherit more than the others, would become the leader of the clan. But uh, above all, the blessing meant the blessing of God that would bless the people through that person. And now we remember, God told Rebecca, even before the boys were born, God said, the older will serve the younger. God had a plan for Jacob. And God told Rebecca that. But, but, and, and this is a huge but. Rebecca and Jacob decide not to wait for God. And so they take a shortcut. So read with me, verse 5. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. And then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would be bring, bringing down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Please go read the rest of the story. Because you know how it works. Initially now, Jacob is a, a little hesitant. Like, what if Esau come back, comes back and he catches me? I mean, that guy, he's a big guy. And what about dad? If I trick him, I'm going to humiliate him. And then the Jacob in him just takes over that, that heel grabber that I'll take you back so I can get forward takes over. And, and he falls in with, with the plan and, and they cook the lamb. And they put the goat skin over his arms and over his neck. And then he goes to his father and with his best Esau voice, he says, Father, it is me, Esau, your son. I'm here for the blessing. Initially, Isaac is a little, uh, but the deception works. And Isaac blesses Jacob. 
A little while later, Esau comes back and he prepares the food, takes it to his father and said, Father, it's me, it's Esau, here I am, I'm here for the blessing. And of course, the whole deception uh, just falls apart and it comes out. And I know what you're thinking, if I can just for a second pause here. I know what you're thinking, why didn't Jacob, Isaac just go and grab Jacob by the neck and unbless him and give the blessing to Esau? The thing is, with a blessing, it doesn't work that way. Once a blessing was given, it couldn't be taken back. And once that blessing has been given, the same blessing couldn't be given to someone else. It would have to be something completely different. It was done. But look what happened. Can you imagine the household after this, the, the tension between Isaac and Rebecca about what she had done? The, the tension between the two boys that had always been there, the tension between Rebecca and Esau, so much so that Esau said, verse 41, go read that. This is my promise. When my father dies, I will surely kill my brother Jacob. Now, Rebecca hears this. And she decides this just can't happen. So she gets Jacob out there with some or other story about getting a wife, gets him out there as fast as he can, as she can. That's just the way that shortcuts go, right? I mean, just think about it. The story is only started. But look at the damage of Jacob's life. On, on the positive side, he stole the birthright and now deceived to get the blessing. So he's got both those. But look on the damage side. The whole family is splintered. He's homeless. He's penniless. He's on the run. He humiliated his father. His brother hates him and wants to kill him. And as far as we know, he would never, ever see his mother alive again. See, that's just the thing about shortcuts. They take us away from the glorious things that God wants for us. And here's the question, and I know you've been waiting for this, right? What shortcuts have you been taking? Because I know the moment that we got together and we started listening and you looked at me and you were kind of pointing a finger at me for the mess that I made, right? Uh, God was prompting you in your own heart with his Holy Spirit, asking what shortcuts have you been taking? Where are the moments where you didn't trust God, where you didn't wait on God, where you just went and did the things? Because here's the thing. We don't all go into private offices and make phone calls on someone else's phone. But how does your tax return look like? Maybe, um, are you really true to your spouse? We don't all deceive, deceive uh, with, with, with goat skins, but, but the lies and the manipulations and, and twisting the truth and, and thickening things on and dropping names... I mean, I mean, God really wants me to have that job, so it's okay if I pad my resume a little bit. I mean, God really wants me to be happy, so it's okay if I find happiness in the arms of another man or another woman that isn't my spouse. I mean, God doesn't want me to lie, but if I told the truth in this, I mean, I would be in so much trouble, so it's okay for me to tell that little lie, right? Can I remind you of what Paul said? We have all taken shortcuts and fall short of what God's glorious will for our lives is. Because the thing is this. 
Shortcuts, bad shortcuts, how well intended they are, always hurt people. And with God, there are no shortcuts. None. Zero. Nothing. There are no shortcuts. God didn't need Rebecca and Jacob to take the shortcut and deceive and lie and do all this hurt. All they needed to do was to wait for God to fulfill God's plan in God's time. So can I ask you something? What do you need? What are you looking for? Someone to come into your life in a new relationship? Or a new job or for, for, for your work to just take off and, and, and things to really work well. Well, here's a thought. Wait on the Lord. Take, take that honest, steep, uphill, narrow road. Keep your head high and keep your knees bent and keep your eyes on the Lord. For here's the thing, God's timing is always perfect. He's never too early, and God has never been late. And God's plan does not include deception or manipulation, and it doesn't destroy people. He has a plan. And what God asks of us is, Wait for me. Trust me. I know all, but please don't take the shortcuts. Amen. Pray with me. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the story of Jacob. We limp, Lord, and we struggle. Sometimes we take those shortcuts and we think it's going to be really good and it doesn't end well. Help us to trust you. Help us to wait on you. Help us to know that you have a perfect plan for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It has been wonderful to share this day with you again. Now, as you go into this week, know that God has a blessing for you. And this is his word. The grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The love of God, our Father. And the amazing indwelling and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen. Amen.